Welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Olson and we've got another brand new show for you this week. We're going to take a look at some of the last few days of our late season of turkey hunting and show you what was happening out there. Lots of exciting stuff happening in the turkey woods this year and Jimmy's got some other fun stuff for us this week too. Well, we are pretty excited about that turkey hunting story. We're actually going to kick off this week's show with a story from the northeast part of the Lower Peninsula, Fletcher's Pond, a place that maybe you've never been to before. You won't want to miss that story. Some good bass fishing up there on a very unique lake. And we're also going to stop in and take a look at the Salmon in the Classroom project, what that's all about and what kids are learning. So lots of good stuff on this week's program. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees The sweet smell of nature's in the air Great lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. By Meyer, a destination for hunting, fishing, and camping. From bug spray and tents to GPS and gas, Meyer has nearly everything you need to take on nature and get you there. Meyer. By Zimmer Roofing and Construction in Port Huron, featuring Duralast roofing systems made in Michigan. Zimmer Roofing and Construction provides installation, maintenance, service, and repair, serving commercial and residential clients on the web at zimmerroofing.com. By Country Smokehouse, offering a variety of meat products, Country Smokehouse is located three miles south of I-69 on M53, just south of Imlay City. Country Smokehouse is a meat processor, a butcher, and a destination for sportsmen. If you're looking for a new corner of the state to explore, don't overlook the place you may have heard about but have never been to before. Fletcher's Pond. Tucked away in the northeast part of the lower, this area is an outdoorsman's paradise. Fletcher's Landing was originally Charlie's Landing, uh, opened back in the 40s. Um, my father Lowell purchased this place back in the uh, late 80s, and for the last six years, me and my brother Stephen have been running it as uh, Fletcher's Landing. Primarily, our customers are hunter and fishermen, um, mainly bass fishermen and northern pike fishermen. However, we get a lot of panfish as well. Um, we have 14 uh, cabins and houses right here on the lakefront, um, right here waterfront. Um, anywhere from three to six people per cabin. Um, mostly we're busy in the summer with uh, pan fishing and bass fishing and pike fishing. Also we do a lot of uh, some deer hunting and duck hunting in the fall. Then ice fishing in, in, February, in, in January and February we get a lot of ice fishermen. We're up in northeastern Michigan. We're about 20 miles west of Alpena in Hillman. Um, on Fletcher's Pond, which I believe is about 9,000 acres, which is about Michigan's 11th largest inland lake. When David reached out to me to see if I would be interested in doing a little fishing on Fletcher's Pond, I jumped at the chance. It's been a long time since we had a camera on this lake, and always looking for an excuse to head north, here we were on one of the nicest days they had had in the early spring. David's buddies Tyler Ferris and Brad Schrader were going to be showing me how to fish this lake, which is full of stumps and debris, making it a little different than most northern lakes. If you're a first-timer here, well, just go slow. It's unique, um, it's a flood water. Um, back in the 30s, they dammed up one of the branches of the Thunder Bay River, um, which then flooded this entire valley. Um, afterward, the loggers came in and chopped off, cut out down all the trees right about water level. So if you're looking across, it's only about six to eight feet deep throughout most of the lake. However, there's stumps and logs and all kinds of cover right, right along the bottom and along, along the water line of the lake. What do we got there? It's a tube bait. Right. Tube Texas rig style. Size weight you got in there? Uh, that's a 3 16 bullet weight. Alright. Just uh, casting out and 
dragging it back on the bottom over the stumps, over the logs. Hopefully we can get some takers here. Well, because there are so many stumps, you really can't open up your motor and just run. You need to go slow, watch for stumps. But when you do get lines in the water, well, it's worth the travel time. Ooh. That's a nice fish. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. That's what we're here for, right? With all the debris, there are plenty of places for the fish to hide, and there is more than one technique to find these fish. Right now, uh, being in the shallows, we're just um, pitching, throwing tubes out, just slowly reeling it back over the logs, letting it drop over the logs, and just uh, hoping to get one of these males that are up here in the shallows right now um, making the beds. Okay. So. And this is, I mean, obviously there's a ton of structure. Is it, is it too much, or is this, a, is this great? Um, we find it great. We, we love it. Um, could be too much for some people. I know some people come up here and get frustrated because it's too much and get hung up a lot. And Like the driver working the boat right now, having to work around all these logs is pretty tough when the wind picks up. So That's why you had him drive? Yes, that's why I let him drive. <laughs> a little later we might move out and throw some jigs at, you know, some in some deeper water there. Okay. And you guys uh, found a few fish earlier today? We did. Same area that we're fishing right now, we came out, found some fish, and obviously that's why we came back out here, and okay. hopefully as it uh, gets later in the day, the bite will get a little better. Okay. Have you fished this lake quite a bit then? Yeah, I've been fishing it to uh, maybe 10 years now, so I'm getting to know it better every year. I don't know why northern fish seem better looking than southern fish, but for whatever reason, on this perfect afternoon, that seemed to be the case. You got the hard job up here steering. <laughs> yeah, the, the wind's dying down pretty good, so that's nice, but... It's like a yeah. minefield out there. Whew. Yeah, we just uh, we just get banged around a little bit, but it's uh, it's all right. We just try to, to get up so we can get underneath the logs, and uh, we're really starting to try to make the beds a little bit, so... Okay, it's it, pretty shallow in here, eh? Yeah, it's got to be... Well, right now it's uh, one and a half feet, wow. and so, it, you know, every... You can see all the, the stumps out here, everything... Everywhere you go, it's a different, uh, <laughs> different, different, challenge. different challenge, right? <laughs> so good, but we get them though. Yeah, I don't know if it's big enough. Ooh, that's a good-looking fish. Uh, wrapped around the. Uh, every every tree. <laughs> that's a fish. This is a very unique lake, and from talking with folks that fish it on a regular basis, they all rave about how much they love it. Not sure if it's the amount of fish, or just being up north a long way from the craziness of life. finding primarily bass today, but the pike fishing here is also very good and really good pretty much all year round. People like it because with the way the lake is, there's really no jet skiing or water skiing, so it's pretty much 100% fishermen out here. We're open year round. Um, fishing really, it's weather dependent. Um, this year is a little bit colder, but usually late April, people are up here fishing, and you have people out fishing all the way into late October. And then obviously about early January, the ice fishing picks up into March. So. A lot of people fishing tip-ups for pike, um, a lot of pan fish as well. Um, some Get some good 10, 11, 12 inch perch. Come out. Back of the boat's leading the pack here. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the captain up front. Yeah, I don't have to do nothing except fish back here, you know? Nice fish. Young man. Thank you, sir. We fished most of the afternoon and headed in as the sun began to set. 
We had a great time on really the first day of warm weather this part of the state had seen up to that point. So what do you do when you're up north after spending the day fishing? Well, you fire up the grill, sit on the porch, and tell some lies of past hunting and fishing trips. It really doesn't get much better. I'm not sure where your summer plans will take you this year, but if you're looking for a new corner to explore, consider Fletcher's Pond. It's a place aimed at folks who love the outdoors, and I bet there are a few fish waiting for you here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, even though turkey season is over, we were able to lay down some really good hunts in the late season this year, and there was just too many to put on all at once, so we're gonna put them on now after the season's ended, and you're gonna love these hunts. All our birds got down and went the opposite way we thought. We got one kind of hanging around down here. We're gonna see if we can move on them and get them to come into us a little bit. Well, this hunt was a bust off the roost. Like so often is the case, the hens had led the gobblers away from our setup. But with a little persistence, we got close enough to them to start calling again. Wouldn't you know it, the hens turned and headed right back towards us. <laughs> we set up this morning in Shiawasset County, ended up moving a good 50 yards right over here in Langham County. We had them gobbling and they moved away this morning so we moved on them through the woods and set up, snuck around this corner and we seen him out there strutting. He had two hens with him and we figured if we set up here they'd come right down this farm lane. Sure enough, they did, and the hens came through, and brought him right with them. Came out, strutted, and gobbled for us, put on a little show, and made a good second shot. So, <laughs> it happens. A couple days later found us once again in Ingham County, but this time near the small town of Dansville. We found a pair of gobblers strutting and decided to move on them. Good friend Jason Schlack was taking his 10-year-old son Carter out for his first season of turkey hunting. We've been moving around multiple times trying to get on birds. Around on these, thinking we're gonna cut them off, and these came right out in the field here. So we setting up here in some tall grass. We got good surroundings. Hopefully they'll come in. <laughs> Tom was within range, but Carter couldn't see it. After several minutes, Jason seized the opportunity to lift him up onto his lap so he could see over the weeds. Oh my god. You know how hard that was, buddy. Oh, oh, that was awesome, dude. Oh, how much work was that? Oh. You could not see him. I had to put you up on my leg without him busting oh. us. Oh my goodness. That was amazing. Can you believe that nonsense? Oh. What happened, Carter? Well, um, the turkey was just sitting there and he was like, he was like, uh, 
and he didn't know what to do, and he was just, just like, what's going on? And then he just, then all of a sudden he's like, oh! <laughs> After you shot him? <laughs> oh, hold for me. Okay. Roll him right up over here. Roll him right up. You drilled him in the head. Look at him bleed oh. all over his head. Look at this thing, Carter. Look at that big old beard, buddy. That is huge. That is bigger than Breeze, I'm pretty sure. It's always a blast to see your kids take their first animal of their hunting career. Jason was one proud dad on this spring morning. Grab him by the legs and throw him over your shoulder. He's uh. super light. <laughs> yep, super light. Grab both legs. You pick him up over his shoulder and carry him? Nope. <laughs> Let me help you. Grab his both feet. Grab him tight. Got him? Yep. Think you can make it back to the car? Hopefully. <laughs> As the season was winding down and the Skeeters were ramping up, Chris Smith called me and said he had a gobbler roosted down the road from his house. Jason Schlack said he would man a second camera behind us as I sat with Chris. Some Dave Smith decoys were set about eight yards away where the gobbler would hopefully see them. Jason got his camera on the bird first as it came in like it had read the script. I've been uh, watching this big gobbler out here in this field for a couple weeks and uh, I saw him come up in here and roost last night and he's been staying on the south side of this field which is, it'd be kind of hard to get him over here before I had to get to work in the morning and stuff. So last night I saw him roost on the north side and uh, we came in here this morning about 5.30 and got set up and he gobbled like crazy. <laughs> he gobbled 50 times, probably maybe more. I gobbled all the way on the ground, all, all the way to us. and. <laughs> he came about 12 yards maybe, not even that, probably inside 10 yards really now that I look. Right out to the decoys, beat up on the Jake decoy and uh, we give him a few minutes. I think Gabe wanted to give him a little more time but I was pretty itchy. <laughs> I was pretty ready to ready to end the deal so, but yeah, awesome man, just an awesome hunt. We had a, I'll tell you, doesn't get any better than that, doesn't get any better than that. It's always sad to see a turkey season come to a close, but it's fun to look back at all the memories that we have made over a month and a half. 
coyotes checking out the decoys, strutters at point blank range, but most importantly, memories of those close friends and family that we share hunts with in the outdoors. Yeah. How's our whole season been? Great, it's just been fun and that I get to spend time with my dad and just that it's fun, I gotta kill a bird. One of the most important things we emphasize here at Michigan Out of Doors TV is getting kids involved in the outdoors. For our next story, I was able to do just that by tagging along with a group of 8th grade students from Fulton Schools as they participated in a salmon release program. This project started for our school about four years ago. Um, I, this is the seventh year I've been part of it. Uh, it's been a great opportunity for each one of our kids. Uh, Natalie Elkins at the DNR and Shana Ramsey have kind of helped us through this. Um, right now our students are releasing all the salmon that we've had throughout the year. Uh, they, uh, they started by collecting their eggs in uh, early November. Uh, the eggs eventually hatched around uh, Thanksgiving time. And then starting about Christmas break time, we started doing active water quality analysis uh, and feeding our fish. Um, basically our students have learned uh, the life cycle of salmon. Uh, that process has involved them continuing often uh, to test water quality. Uh, they need to um, do quite a bit of it throughout the school year. We're now into May and in May now we're uh, out here releasing them. Uh, most of our salmon are about three to four inches long. Uh, basically, this project is just for our kids to understand the natural life cycle of salmon, to study water quality analysis. Uh, they're also out here um, kind of just becoming natural resource stewards. Joining us today were a couple of biologists from the Department of Environmental Quality, or DEQ, helping to show the students some of the science behind what they were seeing. They, along with other organizations like the DNR, really make programs like this one possible. The DEQ got on board with us uh, when we started this program at Fulton Schools. Uh, Jason Smith kind of headed that up. Um, basically, they're here helping us through this. They are showing us the actual science. They're showing us um, how to collect data. They are helping uh, students identify macroinvertebrates. Uh, they are also helping them identify fish species. Uh, and uh, in the past, we've had some individuals helping us with uh, sediment size identification and. Part of that is also identi identifying uh, velocity and flow rates down there. Our kids have gotten into it. It's been a great opportunity for them to learn how to be data analysis individuals. They, they're right now they're actively collecting data. Uh, they're doing measurements. Uh, and all of that data is going into a lab report that they will uh, publish um, in, a, in the next probably two weeks. It'll take them about two weeks to put that lab report together based on the data that they collect here today. Almost everything these students learn today in some way correlates to something they've learned in the classroom, which really helps to increase their understanding of ecosystems and all that that entails. It also helps give them a more complete idea on what really goes on in the outdoors. We're really surprised at the number of students that we have that say that they're fishermen and they're outdoorsmen. And then when we get out here and we start doing this, you start realizing real quickly that they really don't have that much experience outdoors. Um, so we're giving them an opportunity to learn, uh, to to see the natural resource and use the natural resource, but also to put back. Uh, we, we don't want all of our kids to be consumers, uh, and, and we're trying to get them to understand that what we're doing to the natural resource can either positively or negatively impact that resource. Uh, many of our kids have actually started, even in the eighth grade, have started to talk about, well, maybe it'd be interesting to work for the DNR. Maybe it'd be interesting to work at the hatchery that we tour down in Kalamazoo. Maybe it'd be interesting for me to work as a fisheries biologist. Uh, so they've, they've seen these career opportunities in action, which often I don't think they get that opportunity. And through seeing those, uh, I think a whole new world has kind of opened up to them. Getting kids involved in the outdoors in any capacity is great, but when you can show some of the science that's involved in it, that's even better. Special thanks to all of the students, teachers, and volunteers that helped to make this event possible.
Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you check us out online when you get a chance. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can go to our website at michiganoutofdoorstv.com or you can check us out on our Facebook page. We're on there every few days letting you know where we're at, what's happening around the great state of Michigan, and we've got a lot of exciting stuff coming up for you over the next few weeks. Well, we do have a lot of good things coming over the next few weeks here in Michigan Out of Doors. We're pretty much covering the state as we try to do every week. We're going to have some bass fishing from the northwest part of the Lower Peninsula in Grand Traverse Bay on some of the clearest water I've ever seen in my life. We're going to be down in Lake Erie, southeast corner of the state, doing some walleye fishing down there. We've got a couple week-long trips in the UP planned for this summer where you're going to get to see just what all the great things that our Upper Peninsula has to offer. So make sure you stay tuned over the next several weeks here in Michigan Out of Doors. It's a very fun time to be a sportsman here in the state of Michigan, and hopefully see you right back here next week. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by the Department of Natural Resources Fisheries Division, reminding fishermen that they are our first line of defense in stopping aquatic invasive species. To minimize the risk of invasives, it is required by law to properly dispose of live bait after your fishing trip. By doing so, you help protect Michigan's world-class fishery. By Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises of Munising, exploring Lake Superior's Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore with its sandstone cliffs, caves, waterfalls, and lighthouses. Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises on the web at picturedrocks.com. Buy Propane, exceptional energy. Propane retailers promote the safe use of Michigan-produced gas energy in homes, farms, and businesses across our great state. Learn more at usemichiganpropane.com. Buy Meyer, a destination for hunting, fishing, and camping. From bug spray and tents to GPS and gas, Meyer has nearly everything you need to take on nature and get you there. Meyer. Closed captioning is brought to you by Propane Exceptional Energy. Propane retailers promote the safe use of Michigan-produced gas to outdoor enthusiasts across our great state.